and in relation to documented uh, evidence, we have to work on the documented evidence. When we declare a sacred area, it is an area that is also recommended by the archaeological department and other religious bodies which, which have uh, uh, say in the area that would we would declare. There could be some times people who are cultivating or living in those areas. We never uh, deprive them of their livelihood. Either we would resettle them in close by areas and uh, help their development. We have done this in other areas, in Anuradhapura. We have done this in Kandy, Cultural Triangle, Damulla. Uh, so these are the issues that we should see. A sacred area is an asset and a value for our nation. Yeah. Regardless of which community Irrespective of what, what, who, what community we are in. Because that not only attracts our pilgrims, it attracts foreign um, visitors to our country to visit and uh, enjoy the, yes. uh, what we have as our heritage. So we have to all protect what is there uh, for the benefit of our nation and for the glory of our nation, as well as to guide our people to a better living. Uh, so I don't think uh, our ministry is involved in any uh, selected uh, uh, activity which will deprive any community. I, we have always been able to settle it. There are some issues in terms of tsunami. Uh, tsunami is a totally different uh, issue which has been taken to court, that is not my ministry, taken to court and certain orders given by the Supreme Court. Yeah, uh, but uh what it reminds us is that there are minorities living in different areas and there are different sensitivities that have to be uh, considered, considered before. Yeah. Very much. Exactly. And not only considered, we have to protect. We also have to serve. We have been serving the Islam community. We have been serving uh, the Hindu community. We have developed some of the key Hindu uh, temples, the Christian community. Uh, we have developed uh, many of the Christian. It all depends in the areas of development that we declare as sacred areas. So that this is all part of our heritage. And as you said, this is the diversity that we, we know enriches our own culture and everything else. Yes. As we come to the end of this interview, I'm going to go back to the election. Election time promises from those who stand for election. Tell us, where I am also a voter from Colombo. Uh, you are representing Colombo District. What can we voters in the Colombo District expect if you are elected into power? Colombo is the most developed district in our country. And Colombo has to have more development. And our economy should grow faster. We are dedicated to building uh, the economic growth as a, at a faster rate, where people could benefit not only the uh, state departments, the private sector, and the new uh, citizenry who want to enter the economic activity in our country. This is our goal. I'm very much uh, towards the, the uh, goal of getting the younger generation to play a role in economic activity. Therefore, our economy should grow and open up where new uh, entrants could come in. There may be different uh, new areas should be opened up for the private sector, for the young who should who would make a new attempt in the economic activity. Sri Lanka has got the chance after 30 years, it's a lost period of 30 years, yeah. to catch up in the next few years. That we will deliver to our country. Well, the tough thing for us voters is there are hundreds of people who are asking us for the vote uh, for, for this thing. Tell me, why should we vote for you in particular? As I, rep I would represent, I would say, the victorious government which will come into office. And in, in order to get things implemented, I would represent the principles for which people have been always clamoring for. Good governance, a better deal for the people, and a country which will e economically grow faster and become a modern state. Thank you, Minister Dinesh Kunawadana. Best of luck in the upcoming elections and thank you again for talking to us today. Thank you.